Today we have Mr. Amit Chopra. He's a citizen from Delhi, who has recently suffered from the virus. Uh, Mr. Amit Chopra ha has experienced the worst of the contagion. He has led an active lifestyle. Still, he has fallen prey to the worst part of the disease. He has been to the hospital. He's been incubated. He's been on oxygen support. And today, he is here to tell us about his experience with the virus and how he has survived it. It is no less than a war that he has fought. Thank you so much, sir, for coming to, uh, coming here today to share your experiences. Thank you. Thank you for having me over. Thank you, sir. So moving on to my first question. When you got infected by COVID-19, what were the first symptoms you noticed? Okay, so I... Uh... So this happened on the 12th of April. I had I was at work and I had a little irritation in my throat around 11-ish. Mm. And as the day progressed, my energy level started to deplete. Okay. By the evening, I was feeling totally dehydrated, mm. weak, and had a slight body ache. So I came back home and I had a crocin. Yeah. And uh, But the night, uh, the entire night, I was coughing and I had... Uh, body ache okay yeah so from what i can understand about these symptoms is that they're very similar to symptoms of a viral so this is i think something we should be very careful of is that at this point of time in this second wave any kind of symptom should be a warning bell for us and we should take everything very seriously absolutely so coming to my second question at which point did you go for an rt pcr test Oh, the very next morning. So okay. I was uh, quite sure because the wave was coming and I was reading in the news, yeah. watching it on TV. And a lot of people uh, were talking about it. So the very next morning, uh, I went for my test. And uh, interestingly, the test came negative. Hmm. However, I called my physician, uh, you know, the family physician, who was very candid about it and who advised that I should consider that I have COVID and I should yeah. quarantine myself. So the test usually, uh, you know, test positive probably on the third day onwards. Yeah. So it was pretty, uh, you know, I was, uh, okay, this is also what I learned over a due yeah. course while talking to the doctors. Uh, so the bottom line was do not follow Google all the time. It's better to consult a doctor as well. You know? Yeah. So yeah. that's a very important point, sir, that the RT-PCR test is not sacrosanct as we believed it to be. Whether it's positive or negative, if we are having symptoms, we need to approach a doctor. My third question is, what were the red flags which made you seek more advanced treatment? Uh, so, uh, since I'd immediately consulted my doctor, yeah, and uh, I didn't take any medicine or anything on my own, except for that paracetamol, uh, yeah, I took paracetamol yeah. uh, because I thought I got fever on day one. But the next day onwards, my doctor uh, put me on to the, the regular medicines what are being prescribed for the uh, COVID-19. Uh, so on the fourth and fifth day, I had fever, yeah. and, which was almost 102. Hmm. And then my doc insisted that I should get a CT scan done okay. on the sixth day. Sixth day. Yeah, on the sixth day. So, which is where the real reckoner of my condition, uh, you know, came to light. And so the first thing was that it was, it's very important that to, you, one should consult the doctor. All the yeah. medicine, all the tests, you know, are, uh, you know, you need to do on a certain day. You just can't get up and get your test done and assume that you're bad or good or whatever, you know. Yeah. So each day counted... Uh, you know, in a way, like I've just learned from my doctor that uh, this medicine, uh, Ramdesivir, hmm. yeah, it's only good if somebody has it on the on day three, four, or day yeah. two or three. You know, having it later it doesn't really help. Yeah. So you know, a lot of things I learned from my doc only and through my experience that the medicines also have to be consumed for a certain period and after a certain, uh, you know. Uh, test you know yeah. you just can't pop the pill and think uh, you'll be fine so yeah so day six was the most crucial okay when i got my CT scan done 
in, uh, which revealed that my lungs have been infected very badly. Okay. Yeah. That must have been a truly scary experience. But I think what we can learn from it is that we must follow our doctor's advice. Whatever they say is very important. It's binding. It's God's word. We need to follow it. And we need to take care of all the symptoms at the days you mentioned. So also one important point which I felt you talked about, which is very important for the people today, is that we should not believe in self-medication or Google prescriptions. We should always go to a trusted medical professional to obtain whatever we need to, con- uh, to fight against the virus. So now exactly. that you are better, sir, what do you think of your experience with COVID-19 as an afterthought? Uh, so terrible. <laughs> of course, the storm is behind me now. Yeah. But it was a terrible experience. Uh, I was doing fine uh, till day 11. And on day 12, I collapsed. I had a blackout. Okay. This was around 7 in the morning. I was gasping for breath. Hmm. I was at home that time. Okay. And I started slipping on the morning of the 24th of April, which was probably the 12th or 13th day. 13th. And uh, my family was quite proactive, who immediately, uh, you know, kind of got me hospitalized. Yeah. And I'm one of the lucky ones who has survived. And yeah. Who got medical attention on time. Uh, certainly, it was a dreadful episode of my life. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, you know, even during hospitalization, I was kept in isolation. Yeah. And, uh, you know, usually when you fall sick, you always have some family member or, you know, somebody around you to help you with things. With Corona, it's a very different ballgame. Yeah. You're completely left alone and the body is too weak for any activity, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. The room, room itself seems like a confinement cell, you know, like a jail. Yeah. And due to weakness, you cannot focus on anything. You know, you, want, you don't feel like reading. You don't feel like watching uh, TV or uh, videos. Yeah. But then, uh, and the fact is that the doctors cannot ad- administer you with sleeping drugs. Yeah. Uh, so it's like a punishment. Punishment. And the mind uh, becomes dull uh, in three days. You're lying, <laughs> lying in a ro- room like a zombie. It's like a jail, so your mind stops working as well. So, yeah, it was a horrible experience. I cannot even imagine how terrifying this experience must have been for you, sir. And I think that it is a lesson there in, for all of us who have been flouting COVID precautions, not wearing their mask, or thinking they're over smart and won't get the virus, that no, and nobody is above it. We are all susceptible to it, and we all must be careful to it in the end. When we look at the second wave of the pandemic, we are seeing unprecedented number of cases, a number of deaths. It is truly staggering. At this point, what advice would you like to give to people who are struggling with the virus? So, uh, I'll break it into two parts. I realize that uh, physiologically, it's extremely important to keep yourself hydrated. Okay. And uh, one needs to consume uh, regular meals. Yes, sir. As the steroids and blood thinners uh, drain out a lot of energy out of the body. And uh, mentally, uh, one needs to keep connected with the family, you know, to stay positive. Some people find spiritual chanting as a way, you know, to keep positive, while the others detach themselves from uh, media. Yeah. The bottom line is take every disease seriously, you know, adopt your own ways to stay positive. Keep a check on your appetite. Do not ignore it at such times. So, frankly speaking, uh, when I face uh, difficult uh, times, I even expand my faith. In my thought, I chant all kinds of mantras and prayers from Hinduism to Sikhism to Islam to Christianity. So, uh, you know, it's what suits one. You know, one should just follow. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So it is important to keep ourselves healthy physically and mentally to get through the virus. Both parts are important, whether it being to completely keep your nutrition levels up, keeping your water levels up, or keeping your spirits up. All of these things are essential to defeat the virus in the end. True. When we talk about patients of COVID-19 who are having severe infections, you are one person who can fall into this category. 
how long did you think the worst part of the disease lasted so the worst days were day 6 to 8 when uh, to i had high fever yeah got a loss of appetite insomnia okay. and ninth day onwards it got better uh, the medicines kind of worked yeah but then uh, i i was uh, uh, you know a unique case uh, who collapsed on day 13 hmm. because my lungs were in its grip so yes. days 13 uh, day 13 to 17 were like hell for me hmm. my oxygen levels fell to 68 74 hmm. and i was totally bedridden yeah. so these were the most crucial days you know 6 to 8 and 13 to 17 uh, so of course it depends from case to case but then uh, definitely when you have high fever uh, you know you lose your appetite so that's a very crucial period and even now i'm struggling with the side effects my body doesn't have enough energy mm. to climb down stairs or you know go to work yeah so i might be operating from home for the next 6 to 8 weeks but then uh, yes the body does give you uh, body is a beautiful work of art of god it gives you indications yes i mean in my cases uh, in my case it was day 13 to 17 which was uh, i was totally in a you know uh, in a situation where i had no idea what's happening around me yeah so this probably would be an individual uh, you know experience yeah yeah so sir do you think this time period as well as during your experience with covid 19 you said that you received treatment on time which was a big factor in your uh, recovery so soon i would uh, want to ask you what do you think helped you the most which kind of medicine and what treatment uh so the first factor i'll say which i'll tell every uh, patient of covid is that first have faith in your doctor yeah yeah that's the most important and then even if one knows you know what med- medication one or one is taking the line you know uh, you might just know the name so in my case uh, well i i was put on blood thinners and steroids okay and uh, i was having uh, vitamin supplements but frankly speaking uh, most of the doctors all the time told me that steroids are uh, the most important at uh, during uh, the covid hospitalization Yeah. So at home I was administered low doses which didn't help while when I was hospitalized it was almost uh, mm. I would say 2 300 times stronger medication okay. that I what I was having at home. Yeah. So certainly steroids and now blood thinners in particularly in my case because uh, uh, probably because of age factor and secondly there's a fear of clotting in the body uh, because of covid. yeah so i guess these two and of course the supplements like zinco vids and oh. limc and vitamin c and d yeah basically which became very important yes sir absolutely while you had this virus did what difficulties did you and your family have getting the treatment or getting the bed in the hospital what were the difficulties Uh, all kinds i would say so first we didn't get the bed i was uh, i was admitted to mulchand hospital okay and i was in the emergency ward for almost 8 uh, hours hmm. but they couldn't provide me with a room and okay. uh, then uh, we managed to get a room in a hospital close by which was just in the same um, it was in the same vicinity about uh, a kilometer or two from mulchand yeah and uh, so that was a very crucial period because i think from that and i i struggled to go into the ambulance and the commute from one hospital to the other was very uh, you know uh, i almost gave up at certain times and, yes uh, so that was a very difficult period and once i was hospitalized so i was in isolation i didn't see my family for the next 12 days because uh, no one is allowed uh, okay. such as the disease so, so yes so then then it didn't end over there because the hospital struggled to get oxygen uh, mm. you know to provide oxygen to the patients 
in one of the nights, uh, at the third night, I was sharing a room. So the third night, uh, the the lady who with who, with who I was sharing the bed, she uh, she couldn't uh, hold it, you know, mm. and. Uh, so she expired around seven-ish in the evening, the third day. Then I used to overhear sounds coming from the other wards every second, third day. Uh, you know, people were losing their fight. Yeah. And uh, the hospital was struggling to provide them oxygen. Yeah. And even my levels were kept very low so that you know, the cylinder could last a longer period. Yeah. So, so all kinds of you know external problems were there. Then there was an internal problem. Your mind works on you. Yeah. So telling your stop yourself to stop worrying about something usually has the opposite effect because it makes yeah. you think more about it. Yeah, absolutely. So a more uh, way to manage worry is, uh, in my opinion, is to, is to you know set aside ten minutes of the day, and I call it worry time. Yeah. So I did it twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. You know, where I started, uh, you know, telling my mind, okay, this is the worst, what's going to happen. Yeah. And now for the next 10, 12 hours, I'm not going to think about it. So, you know, that's how I was dealing with my uh, personal uh, dilemmas. And, uh, you know, the other factor is we, as humans, we are social creatures by nature. Yeah. So a lack of physical contact can be extre extremely difficult for us to cope up with, you know. So maintaining social connection is very crucial for well-being at this time, you know. So I, I used all tools available to me, phone, video calls, uh, WhatsApp, social media, to stay in regular contact with my friends, family, and, yeah. uh, which, you know, has eventually strengthened my connections now. Yeah. Rather than letting them fade, interestingly, you know. Yeah. yeah. That was a very beautiful philosophy, sir. Worry time is something we all must incorporate in our lives. Whether we have the virus or are dealing with it or our parents are dealing with it, these are very difficult times. And compartmentalizing our lives and holding one part just for COVID and trying to remain happy and unafflicted during the rest of the time would really help us all and go a long way in our fight in this pandemic. Right. I would like to ask you, after such a harrowing experience, has there, be an, has there been any change in your state of mind or in the way you look at life? Yes, a big one. So I realized that life is too short and uncertain. Yeah. So one should not waste it on toxic friendships. Focus yeah. on what you need to achieve. Stay with people who would elevate your spirits. Yeah. You know, one should quit all uh, negative friendships that one is carrying on. So, uh, you know, once I'm fully fit in the next four to six weeks, yeah, I shall be focusing on my work with a balanced lifestyle, lifestyle wherein I'll spend a good amount of time uh, with my family and friends. Yeah, absolutely. So, sir, in the end, what would you like to say to people who are dealing with the virus or who are dealing with people who have the virus in their houses? Uh, so, as I said earlier, you know, uh, find ways which make you feel positive. You know? yes. It'll be foolish if I say, you know, get into uh, spiritual uh, things or start watching comedy series. No, do what you think yeah. works for you. Uh, and uh, and for some reason, this country is full of uh, uh, a lot of learned people. You know, everyone is as learned as you could be. Yeah. So a lot of advices come. But it's very important that you filter them and you do what works for you. Yeah. You know, so staying positive, but do it your. You yes. Know, and of course, keep yourself hydrated. It's not only for COVID. I would say, you know, on a regular uh, basis. Uh, body is 70% water, so it's very important to stay hydrated for a good mind. And, yes. Uh, you know, to feel active and uh, physically and Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Keeping positive is the key to defeating the virus. Along with your doctors and other medication and taking all precautions, we should be able to get through this. Oh, yes. Sorry. Extremely, extremely important. Extremely important. 
you just highlighted that again. Please uh, do not follow Dr. Google, you know, <laughs> consult your own, own doctor, you know, uh, your physician or wherever, you know, even, even for general diseases, you know, okay, headaches and all, yes, you can always go buy a pop in a pill. That's a different story, but, you know, any disease, doctors spend almost 10 years of their lifetime, you know, doing research, studying. So, of course, they know better, you know, and every day the medicines are changing. Yes. You know, there are new new uh, variants coming. So, it's very important before you pick up any pill on your own, it's important to consult a doctor and uh, treat yourself. Yes, sir. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and talk to us about your difficult experiences in this contagion. Your knowledge and your experiences will help hundreds of patients who are dealing with the virus or who have dealt with the virus to come out stronger, better, for the wear out of this situation. Thank you so much, sir, and I hope you get well soon and are back okay. up on your feet in no time. Mm -hmm.